There we go, our seaside band. Sounding good. I love that Jamie's so tall. This mic is really tall, huh? This is good. Hi, my name is Debbie McDonald. I have some announcements for you this morning. I'd invite you to come on in from the family room and uh, have a seat. We're going to get ready to get started here. Before I begin our announcements, I just want to take a moment to honor the practitioner that's holding the light for us this morning, Practitioner Carolyn Holder. Thank you. As a reminder, we always have a practitioner holding the light for us during every service. Uh, they're doing the high watch. And also know our practitioners are always available for prayer. Always. It is our honor and our joy to pray with you. We're available after service uh, over there by the prayer chapel at the side entrance, or you can write a written prayer request and put it in the chest where Carolyn is sitting. We also have a prayer chest at the side foyer. If you write a prayer a request and put it in there, we'll pray on that for a few weeks for you, and it's completely, absolutely confidential. Also, all our practitioners are always available for private sessions, and all of our phone numbers are in the Inside Seaside program. Today, we have several great workshops going on, so you have your choice. First of all, after service, Cafe on Lake is open. Today is a Mexican salad bar. They have vegetarian, gluten-free, and regular chicken, so they have something for everyone. It's only $7, so please stay, have some lunch, and either attend. Our, uh, uh, we have introduction to Facebook with Lori Gertz. We had a Facebook workshop a while ago, and a lot of people realized they were at the very beginning stage. So Lori's agreed to do another workshop, and if you don't have a Facebook page, you want to get a Facebook page, this is the time to come and play. She'll help you get it all set up and ready to go and teach you all the privacy things and all that stuff. Also, we have a wonderful, wonderful workshop today with our very own Dr. Christian and his beautiful wife, Callie, Jamie Lula, and his beautiful wife, Susie. Yes, all four of them are coming together today to offer a wonderful uh, workshop on spiritual partnership. Uh, it's again, it's at one o'clock today, so stay for lunch and be part of that. You don't have to be part of a couple to attend. You can be a single person and come and, and just bring all that great energy into your life and learn the tools to create a wonderful, healthy spiritual partnership. I invite you to be part of that. Our sages are meeting today, and Dr. Tillinson will tell you a little bit about that. Also, our Real Love facilitator, facilitators are meeting afterwards, uh, after service as well. Next Sunday, we have our last winter workshop. It's a Sunday afternoon workshop with Dr. Nandini Kater. I hope I say her name right. Science and Spirituality. Dr. Kater is in the back, wave. She's over there by the education table. And she has made a wonderful gesture. She is waving the $25 workshop fee and offering it as a love offering only. So pay whatever you feel you can and come and be part of it. It's an introductory a day to introduce a class she'll be teaching in the spring, quantum physics and spirituality, what is consciousness, was my most fascinating class that I took in through my ministerial training. So if you want to learn about science and spirituality, that is the place to be next Sunday. And uh, she is here today. If you have any questions, you can talk to her in the family room afterwards. On uh, the 21st, our couples are having a spring fling uh, potluck, so check out the uh, couples table in the family room. On March the 22nd, the Seaside Women's Ministry is continuing their conscious creativity uh, piece that they did last year, and this year we're doing um, art as spiritual practice. I will be the facilitator for that, and uh, starting, we'll have three classes. Uh, Saturday morning, 10 to 12, March 22nd is the first one. $25 per session or $60 if you want to sign up for all three. The first uh, Saturday we'll be exploring spirit taking form. Be using meditation, guided imagery, and opening up to that creative flow through you. There is no art experience required and all supplies will be given to you. So join us Saturday morning, you women that would like to be part of that. Also on the 23rd, the next Sunday, after that, two weeks, is our drum circle, and Cafe on Lake will be open. Cafe uh, uh, on Lake will also be open next week for the workshop, too, so you can stay and have lunch there as well. Just to mention that our own Dr. Christian has been invited to do a TED Talk 
So they're going to be filming here, TEDx, on the 15th of March. You're welcome to come and purchase a ticket and be part of that. I think it's 20 speakers, but Dr. Christian is one of them. So we just wanted to mention that. Also, we have an opportunity to be of service here at Seaside. Uh, our folding ministry meets on Thursday afternoons, and they're needing some help. So it's what they do is they prepare the programs for you all on Sunday. So if you're available on Thursday afternoons, please talk with our office staff or with Dr. Christian, and he can let you know more about that. Last but not least, I want to tell you about this event we have coming up on the 29th of March. Channeling George Harrison, David Young. Our David Hackett here is going to be here after service selling tickets. They're $20 today, $30 at the door. This gentleman, uh, David Young, has sold over a million CDs. He has 55 albums. He is one of the leading um, New Age musicians. His claim to fame is he plays two flutes at the same time in harmony, which I don't know how he does that. But he's going to have a healing workshop and then uh, talking about his new book and then question group meditation. And he's going to talk to you about his experience of channeling George Harrison. So come and be part of that. So with all this wonderful love and energy and excitement, I ask you just please just stand and greet your neighbor and remain standing for the congregational song. remain standing there we go time for our congregational song together this morning we're singing how can i serve two, sweet spirit one, two, three, four. come on now come on all right here we go how can I serve today, sweet spirit? How can I serve today, oh Lord? Speak in ways that I will understand. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will go. Who needs my love today, sweet spirit? Who needs my love today, oh Lord? Speak in ways that I will understand. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will go. on this fabulous day. California is always on the progressive leading edge, so we're just doing spring early around here. <laughs> Days are gorgeous, the colors are bright, and we are just enjoying that spring feeling that is just swelling up on the oranges and the pinks and the yellows. I mean, they're all over, and we didn't even coordinate it that. Imagine. 
one mind we got going on here at Seaside. I want to welcome you. If you may be here for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Know that our arms are open. It is truly a home of love and a spiritual community that cares, that is without judgment, that attempts to practice kindness to the best of our level. It is truly a spiritual nexus where many pieces come together to just create the spiritual essence and energy that is going on. I heard all the workshops going on today and the flowers. They're gorgeous. I want to say thank you to Callie and Susie who just have given it to all of us in honor of the workshop going on today for uh, just that spiritual partnership, your connection uh, with life. So a lot is going on, but what's happening right now is we put spirit first always, and this is the time where the always is to take us deeper into that wonderful place as a spiritual practitioner here at Seaside. That is Linda Light, our in-house yoga guru. Mm. So let's just take a minute to go into the stillness. Lord, is in this sweet place, right here, right now, that I recognize God in the spring, in the room, in the colors, in the vibrancy, in the air. I know that this is all God. I know that this is the creation of our divine spirit. And I know that I am a part of this without any doubt, without any hesitation. All I have to do is take a look in my heart. All I have to do is look around this sanctuary. And as I see everybody else, I know that it is all one. So as I am one, everyone else is one. It is one mind. It is one creation, this world, this universe, all that goes beyond that we cannot even see, that we cannot hear, that we cannot sense. It's all God. And I am blessed for this and blessed in knowing this. I'm so grateful to be able to be here, to listen, to hear the words of Reverend Dr. Christian, to hear the music that is played so beautifully to hear the voice of Jamie Lula, to hear, to touch, to feel, to sense, to be with everyone here present and those that are on the podcast listening from afar. Feel the heart, feel the opening, feel the expression. Just be in this place of receptivity and in this place of giving back. Mm. And so it is. Little darling seems a long cold lonely winter little darling it seems like years since I've been here here comes the sun here comes the sun and I say it's all right. 
little darling The smiles returning to their faces Little darling It seems like years Here comes the sun Here comes the sun, and I say it's all right. 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 Little darling. The ice is slowly melting Little darling It seems like years Since it's been clear Here comes the sun Here comes the sun And I say it's all and you say it's all right and we 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 say Oh, thank you, Reverend Fran, for reminding us that it truly is all right and the sun is here. And thank you so much, Master Practitioner Linda Light, for praying us in so beautifully. Good morning. I'm Reverend Christina Tillotson, and I get to welcome you again, especially if you're here for the first time. We are so grateful that you turned your clocks forward so that you were able to come here and celebrate um, and share your life here, light here with us on this amazingly beautiful morning. And because we're so grateful you're here, we have a gift packet for you in the back. If on your way out, you'll pick it up. It has gift certificates for the bookstore and CDs and all that kind of stuff. And you have come to a place where we absolutely celebrate all of the, the world's great wisdom from all the religions and the philosophy and the science of the world, putting it, ancient and modern, putting it together in a way that, that enhances our own lives in a spiritual way and creates a world that works for everyone. So thank you so much for being here and being a part of that. As you heard by the announcements, you have many, many choices after the service today. One of the hardest things about being here at Seaside is figuring out what to do after the service. And, and um, aside from, from Dr. Christian's spiritual partnership workshop and, and Lori Gertz's Facebook workshop and lunch, at 1230 up at the, at the Cardiff South, up the hill to the right, we're continuing our wellness support group for all ages so that you can, can be supported in, your, in manifesting your health intentions for 2014. So come join us there, even if you can only come for a little while and then go to one of the other workshops, come say hi and, and get some support for your health intentions. So today is about love. It's about sharing that <clears throat> abundance of love, our good fortune of love that we have in our lives. <clears throat> and I've chosen to read from Mark Nepo's 7,000 Ways to Listen, which is one of the new books required for pro pro professional practitioner studies. Every time I read him, I get God bumps. There's one copy left in the bookstore, so run afterwards to get your copy. We are put here for a little space that we may learn how to bear the beams of love. William Blake. How I love people. I love how we root and bloom, how we twine around each other and reach for the light. How as far as we grow into the dark of the earth is as far as we stand in the world. How being human we are always charged with the vibrancy of a larger presence. 
how the complexity of our humanity mirrors this larger presence. In truth, we mirror everything living as we climb and stumble our way up the mountains of the cliff of yes. I recognize each person I come across because I am each on any given day. What matters is whether I shun those who bear my flaws or help them up, whether I turn away when this larger presence seems too strong or keep my birth eyes open, whether I find a way to meet what is incomprehensible and somehow draw strength from it. What matters is if we can make it to the cliff of yes and shout out our secrets to the sky till, till heaven is the song we choose to sing on earth. So let's take these ideas into prayer. Turning that to that place where I know there's only love. There is only that power, that presence, that, that love, that, you, that glue of love that holds the universe together that I call God, and it doesn't matter what one calls it, but is that light, that love, that power that created every single thing from the tiniest atom to the farthest galaxy out of itself. It is all light. It is all love. It is all God. And that one is who I am right here and right now in each beautiful spirit here is. That light and that love and that power of spirit right here and right now in human form, in this sacred space, celebrating that together. So I am knowing out of this sacred, sacred time together that that love that is the truth of each one here just wells up inside so strongly that it flows out to this universe, sharing that fortune of this love with this community and this state and this, this country and this whole world, just surrounding this amazing, beautiful planet in love and going out into the universe in that love. And for this love, for this light, for, for this sacredness that is the truth of this sacred time together, I am so, 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 so grateful as I release this word to the law, knowing that it is now done in perfect love. And so it is. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How are you? How good to see you. Good to see you. Congratulations. We got through another daylight savings time thing. I'm telling you, is that shocking to everybody's tummies and their pillows? I, I'm telling you, I was waking up all night, and then Carl set the clocks early, and I thought I was in a parallel universe because I couldn't get the right TV channel thing. So what? Eight, nine, eight, nine. It's, you know, just my personal little thing. But I'm back. I am back, and um, I want to tell you we have the most, you know, beloved guest that we've had forever and ever. I love Jamie Lula's music. He's, he's stellar in his performances. He's sought after all over. You can see him in San Diego, all the way up to the North Coast, all over the world. And I, I especially like his song when it says, You're perfect. You're golden. Does he love that song? I Say, I thought he wrote it for me. I thought he wrote it for me. He did. He said he wrote it for me. So, listen. so would you please give him a warm welcome, please, for writing a song as beautiful as he does. Jamie Lula. She's one sassy broad, isn't she? I'm so grateful that you're all here today. What did Carl say? I have no idea, yeah. We only see the tip of the iceberg, right, Carl? <sighs> what a beautiful congregation. <clears throat> so uh, I wrote this song a number of years ago. Uh, a woman that I was working with um, said, "Would my boyfriend and I decided to get married, would you write a song for our wedding? And I said, absolutely. And it was a beautiful wedding, and... The marriage lasted about 10 months, but the song has <laughs> carried on, so I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity. I think they're much happier as a result of that choice. But uh, 
I, I sing this kind of in honor of our spiritual partnership workshop that we're doing today that I'm so excited about. Um, Susie and I got together originally as uh, we were prayer partners. And um, <laughs> what a concept, you know? It's like I'd never met a girl and been a prayer partner. And it wasn't a line. It was, I mean, she was really my prayer partner. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll pray with you, babe. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It was like I really wanted to pray with her. And okay, I better quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> right? As we step out of where we come from. Walking tall in who we've become Being seen for all that we are Is just one part of our love I see you and you see me And we welcome each other to our destiny All that we're here to express And nothing less we're here to share our brilliance safe place to land you are my safe space to land we've made a great place to dance I am your safe place to land you are my safe space to land we've made a great place to dance Walking through our new garden that we came here to cultivate Out of seeds that we planted long ago through the winds of change and fate I see you and you see me we welcome each other to our destiny all that we're here to express and nothing less we're here to share our brilliance i am your safe place to land you are my safe space to land we've made a great place to dance i am your safe place to land you are my safe space to land We've made a great place to dance Safe place to land I'll be your safe place to land Safe place to land Let me be your safe place to land So we're grateful for all that we've been through Cause it brought us to where we are and we wouldn't have wanted something else to replace this loving heart. I am you and you are me. We thank you, God, for all that we are here to be. All that we're here to express and nothing less we dedicate and you bless. I am your savior.
to land, safe place to land. I'll be your safe place to land. Hey. Hey. Well, that is Jamie Lula. Safe place to land. That is a great one. My goodness, perfect for today, that's for sure, this whole season. Thank you. Hey, so here we go. We are um, involved with taking a look at love. Seaside has been committed to experiencing love in our life, and we've been working with Dr. Greg Bear's book. And just a heads up, I encourage you to pick up your tickets. He's coming, um, you know, the end of next month, and we've got him for the whole weekend, so plan to be part of that. What we're working on right now is um, real love from his book, and we're in the sixth chapter called Sharing Your Fortune, and that is all about sharing from the overflow, sharing the love that you have got in, in your life. And he points out very clearly that if somebody comes up to you and they're hungry and you want to share with them and you have nothing to share with them, you can't. That is the challenge when you don't have that love thing going on in your life. And so in the earlier chapters, we took a look at uh, being able to receive love. And one of the first things you have to do is be seen. We talked about the story, remember the wart king, the kid who had to take the bag off of his head and his face was filled with warts and had to be willing to be seen and tell the truth, this is who I am, before somebody could actually accept him. And then once you get accepted really for who you are, not like who you think people want you to be, but who you truly are with all your warts and mistakes and challenges and flaws, that you can truly be loved for who you are, which takes us into this chapter because it begins by if you want to share from your fortune, you got to be coming from a place of love. And if you don't have love, then how can you come from that? What happens is when you don't have that love thing going on, you're, you're out there looking for it. And the first line from this chapter is, you know, one of the great joys is receiving love. Does that feel good? I mean, I, I like, I got to fess up. I like that. Um, but then it goes on saying even greater joy is giving that love, is being able to share that love. And so, but how do you share if you don't have it? It's as if you got a bucket and the bucket is empty. How do you pour anything out of the bucket? And so you're out there getting the love that isn't really the real love. It's the imitation love, the kind of love you can get through the manipulation, the control, love me, through, and you get the pain or the pleasure or the, uh, or the power or, or whatever the manipulation is to get what it is to fill up that bucket. But the truth is that stuff's so heavy it blows the bottom out of the bucket. And you can never get enough in there because there's no bottom to hold the goodies so you have more to pour out and you got an empty bucket. But... This is the part I figured out that we bring to the real love equation that isn't necessarily in there, and that is the spirituality part. See, if you've got a hole in the bottom of your bucket, it can't hold anything, putting anything in. But what it can do is it can allow the flow out. And what we have at the center of our being is that life force, and it can flow out through that bucket. If you're willing to tap into the source, that all creative life essence from which you were created, that is what you can have move through you. It is inexhaustible. Yeah, I like that part. Good example of that, Mother Teresa. Boy, she was in touch with a love, energy, and essence that flowed from her. Other examples, you read about the saints, read about the mystics. They become that conduit where it pours forth from you and, and it brings a richness out. You know, today in the workshop that we're doing on spiritual partnership, whether it's singles or, or with someone else or a relationship, one of the first exercises we're going to do is to show you how to have that love flow through you. You don't have to get it from anyone, anything outside. We will tap right into that source that you get to pour forth into your world. And the joy about pouring forth into life, that's when it starts coming back. You know, that's why it's important to get in the game. It's why it's important to get out there. You know, um, we get hurt sometimes in life. You know, it, you know, whether it's in a, a relationship or, or in business or, or the finances or, or our body or the doctor or the challenges that are there. And it makes sense to want to just sit on the sidelines occasionally. But I watch our chargers at the end of the season, <laughs> and they are beat up. And what do they do? They get out there. They play anyway. They play in the pain. It's like, coach, let me in. Let me in here, coach. 
And that is important is that for us to get back into the game with the pain and the difficulty and pour forth what it is that we have because as you begin to pour forth, what happens is there is a pouring forth that comes back into your life. When you are willing to play, you are putting yourself in a place of being receptive. Life, or God doesn't care what good shape you are. All He cares is that you're in the game and that you're playing. You ask one of those players, does it hurt? Well, it doesn't hurt so bad. Uh, but it hurts more to sit on the sideline than it does to be pain, playing with the pain. And so, what I found that if you're empty in your place of pain, one of the best things you can do is find a place to go give. To go share. Because as you pour forth, there is a reciprocal essence that begins to fill that bucket once again. It begins to fill that pantry. It begins to bring the good fortune back into your life. Where is it that you can begin to share what it is that you have moving through your life, even if it's just a little bit? Can I find a place in which I can share? I mean, for myself, you know, this week what I, what I did is I, I went down to the hospital, and as I walk through the hospital halls, I see myself like a boat with a wake of love that's just pouring out of my hands and just filling all the open doors as I go walking by. And I don't know if anybody ever feels any difference, and I don't try to change anybody say, hey, this is the kind of love, or this is what I think in your life, you need in your life. I just allow that life force, that spirit, that essence of my being fill the hallways as I go by. And if you could see that realm, it would be, it would be good stuff. You know, I went to stop in a couple house visits this week, and, and uh, boy, these folks, they're just so receptive. And what I've come to notice is important, and, and part of the teaching of this real love, is when you're coming from love, you got to see the other people if you want to be able to give it. But if you're empty, you know, then, then you're looking, what can I get from them? That's not being available for the truth of love to show. Or when you're dealing with other people, what might they do to me? That's fear. You know, one, what can I get or what might they do? And, and it begins to shut down. But what's interesting, at least, you know, I, I, I'm in a profession where I show up in, in these situations where people are kind of raw, if you would. I mean, I mean try to you know, tell women I'm coming by so I can put on some lipstick. If that, that helps them feel a little better sometimes. But, you know, I, I show up. And there's a vulnerability, there's an exposure. You know, I'm in bed, I'm in pain, and things aren't working. And, you know, this is who I am. It, you know, and so in their willingness to be truthful, this is me. It is easy for me to say, I love you, because I, I I'm not trying to get anything. I just love you. I'm here to share love. You know, we're part of a spiritual community. That's the beauty of being part of a community. We have, you know, 500 of us or 1,000 of us that absolutely create this bubble, this love vibration, this caring vibration, this kindness vibration, that when any one of us reaches out, it's like we tap into this stream and this conduit that moves through us, that makes a difference in wherever it is we're showing up. There is a love, there is a life force, there is a spirit that moves through you. When you're saying, use me, and I'm willing to pour forth what it is I have, you begin to tap into that which is inexhaustible, and as you pour forth, more comes in, and the wonder and the beauty and the joy a spirit expresses in your life. There was uh, a, a, a young girl, Katrina uh, Lacardi, and Katrina Lacardi, um, she had a secret, and um, it wasn't like a big secret, but it's a secret that she lived with every day of her life that um, that she kept concealed. That that's not what she would share, you know, with people. And as she was approaching her teenage years. And uh, starting, you know, middle school, she talked to her mom, Carmela, and said, Mom, I, I think I need to come forth. I need to come clean um, with what's going on in my life. Mom said, you know, I, 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 I've got concerns, you know, I, um, about bullying, about being teased, about not being accepted. But it was important for uh, Katrina to to just reveal the truth of who she is because she wanted to know who her real friends are and who it is that loves her for who she is. So she talked to the school counselor about how would be the best way to share what was going on. What was going on for her is that she had an autoimmune skin disease, um, al alopecia, alopecia. Th that's where the patches of, of hair ju just come out. And so it started at the age of eight, and within a year she was wearing a wig. 
and, um, and she wanted to, the children to know that she didn't have any hair and that she has been hiding this for, for several years. And so the faculty was extremely moved by her courageousness of being able to be truthful about who she is, that some of the teachers got together and they created a documentary about her and this particular autoimmune uh, skin disease. And they put it together and they played it uh, for the different classes throughout the day in the library. And Katrina, along with her mom, stopped in on one of the showings of the documentary in the library in the afternoon. And what caught them by surprise is that everybody in the library was crying with the honesty, with the courageousness, and a willingness to say, guys, this is who I am. Love me or not, but I can no longer hide myself. And as we open up to the diversity we begin to recognize that we're living in a multi-expressive life and world. And Katrina, after the showing, stood up and just um, said, guys, you know, this is who I am. And she took the wig off her hair, and the people just applauded. They, thought, they said that she was beautiful with, with no hair. She answered their questions, which is part of diversity. Is you know we, We're afraid to ask the questions. We don't know if we're going to be insensitive. They said, you know, does it hurt? Is there pain? What's it like? And all of a sudden, she began to be truthful in her truth with the people. And the love that poured back to her was phenomenal, which filled her up that allowed her to pour mo- love back into the life and into the world. And so that is the thing. When we are willing to be who we are, even if it is not necessarily necessarily embraced or supported but I'm willing to stand up even if you're going to give me a vibe or even if you're going to look at me a strange way I'm going to stand in my truth and be who I am because I'll tell you what as kids we have learned about disapproval you know we have learned about disappointment you know our parents or some of our parents raised us with you disappoint me you know oh do you know how much that hurts me And all of a sudden, we learn to be controlled by facial expressions, by body language, by attitude, by looks and vibes. And we learn very young that my behavior is not acceptable, that if I behave a certain way, you'll love me more. If I behave incorrectly, you will love me less. I just need to look at your body, and I will know exactly if you approve of me or not, and I'm going to do what I need to do to win your approval. Then we take that into life, and we're no longer authentic. We're no longer standing on our our truth. We are standing on what has been put into our mind and our thinking, and we are no longer in integrity with our life force that we're here to deliver because we're trying to win the approval of somebody else. Virginia Satir, a wonderful psychoanalysis, very big, you know, with the family therapies, said that with every facial expression, every word, every gesture, every action, a parent is giving a message to their child. And the sad part is many parents don't know the message they're giving. Some of those tough messages you got, Maybe your parents didn't know they were giving that to you. You know, maybe they were drowning. And they didn't know better. But they loved you the best they could. And that expression of disappointment is just, they didn't know better. As you begin to choose love instead of some of the other choices, you begin to fill that bucket more. From the inside, you begin to shift inside your own being so you have more to share as opposed to getting upset. How many were controlled and taught by upset or anger? We've learned anger is always wrong. Anger does not may get you what you want, but it won't get you love. If you control a dynamic through your anger, through being louder than anybody else, then you may get what you want, but you don't get love. You don't get the respect. You don't get the caring and the kindness and the mutual admiration. Anger is never the right approach. Bullying is never the right approach. What you've got to do is be willing to stand in your truth and express who you are because that is what you have to share. That is the fortune that you have to give. That is what you get to bring to the table. And as you begin to bring it to the table, what you will find are those who relate to that aspect of who you are. And as those show up, you have more to share and can continues to exponentially make a difference in the world in which you live, in which the world in which you walk, 
Who you are is an emanation of that life force. Who you are is a transparency for God or for life to have its way. And as you begin to allow it to move through you, the healing and the purging of that which is not like it begins to fall away through your different processes, your interactions, and your behaviors. But you become that clear conduit. So you are a sharer of the fortune which is spirit made manifest in our life and in the world in which we live, and we walk, and we have our being. So where do you start? Kabir made it very clear. The entry point is right where you are. That's where you start. That's what you've got to work with. Right where you are becomes the entry point. And so as you take a look, maybe sitting on the sideline, because you've been bruised, maybe you lost a relationship, you lost a house, you lost a business, you know, your body is not treating you the same way. You gotta be in the game. You gotta get in. You know, that, that's the thing. Spirit always has something beyond this. That's good. I like that. Spirit has something beyond this. Yeah, you know, so, you know, you've yet to dance your best dance. You know, you've yet to sing your best song. I've yet to write my best book. Yet to, you, know, how, you know how it could go on forever. You yet to do the best, what have you. And so, what is is what is. And there's something on the other side of this. You know, this week I got out on the tennis court for the first time in years. I haven't played tennis since Seaside had the tennis tournament. Do you even remember when that was? <laughs> that shows you how long it's been since I played tennis. Now, I used to be pretty good at tennis. I was on the high school varsity tennis team, and so I could go years without playing and pick up a tennis racket and be pretty sharp. Well, I picked up a tennis racket with Brett, thanks a lot, showed me my... <clears throat> flaws and he loved me with my flaws and my mistake but I got out there on the tennis court and you know he hit the ball and I watched it go right by me <laughs> I said Christian I told you to move <laughs> you know but like the body didn't move when I told it to move I told it to swing and it didn't swing I I used to have long legs I could always get to the ball no matter where it was something has happened I think my legs are shorter or something <laughs> I huff and I puff like I can't breathe. It was ridiculous. But what I recognize is there's something on the other side of this. <laughs> I hope. No. <laughs> but see, that, but that's the thing with the faith. You've got to know that there's something on the other side of this. You know, I, I, I look at, you know, we, we've got, uh, I'm looking at Vivian back there. And, and I'll share your story just briefly, Vivian, because you've shared it publicly. Is that okay? But I mean, here, here's an individual who was here on one Sunday, went in, had a little operation, and we didn't see her for another year. Something went awry, and, and uh, it took a year to show up here again in a wheelchair. But courageously refusing to be sidelined because there was something on the other side of what took place with the doctors in her life that, that knocked her down for the extended period. There is always something on the other side of this. That's right. You know, I've had people show up with hospital bracelets on their arm. And I said, wow, what's, when's that from? They said, well, I'm still in, but they don't know I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get back soon, I, hey, Vivian, standing up. Hey, Vivian. You know, everyone who's on wheels in that back, we've got six individuals that show up here on wheels every week. It's just an inspiration as to think what it takes to, to make it here. But you know what? There is something beyond being sidelined. It's getting back into the game. You know, and it doesn't matter if you're in the hospital, you still show up. They said to me when they were here, I said, I can't be out long, Christian, so don't talk long today. <laughs> you know? What is it you're choosing to do? You need to be that space where that reciprocal life force moves through you. You need to be that place where the presence of God that can speak. And if you can't, it, it, that's why I don't know. I need to go look for it outside so I can be filled. No, you need to look inside yourself first. Father Thomas Keating said, silence is God's first language. And everything else is a poor interpretation. It's up to you to go within and to listen to that and recognize that when you go the other side of where it is you are in your life, there, there could be some concern. But what I've come to recognize is that we're not so afraid of change per se or even 
not unwilling to let go of what was. It is that space that is in between where the fear is. It is that space between the two trapezes that is the dynamic here. It is the anxiety that Linus has when his blanket's in the dryer, you know. No, I'm telling. I'm telling you who it is. You know, so find that power, that, that, that expression of life, that God force. If spirit is all things, then you are spirit. That is where the power lies. But so often we put the concern outside of ourselves. That, oh, no, what's this person going to say? Or what can I get from this person? And we forget that they are in your life because of the greatness that you are. You are that power. You are that presence. And if things aren't working out, then you go let, make them work out. You take the responsibility to bring your dream, your expression, and your love into form. It doesn't matter if those in authority are supporting what it is you've got. It's up to you to support what God has given you to bring to this world. And those who can relate will show up. Not even Oprah got on Oprah. She had to become Oprah. <laughs> yeah. You have got to become who you came here to be. That's right. And so who's in your life gives you the opportunity to practice. I'm a firm believer in practicing with who's in front of you and, and who it is you're with. To be able to trust that relationship and that dynamic to move through wanting to stay on the sidelines or check out of this world. You've been given something that we need and we hunger for. You know, there's a story from this chapter that talks about... Um, uh, it was Greg and Mary. And Greg and Mary got, mar got married, and um, their relationship was good, and then it began to progress. As they were children, there was less, let's say, respect. Greg would be upset that Mary was always coming home from work late, that, where she spent the money, and uh, just all sorts of dynamics. And it just seemed to get to a place where there didn't seem to be an answer. They pro I don't know, but I guess they were together because of the kids at this point. And they, they talked to a wise person who helped them see and asked Mary, you know, what, what's going on? Or what could be different? Or how do you see it being better? And he said, it's just Greg. He, he just, he tells me I'm overweight, that I, I'm not attractive enough, that I, I work too much, that I, um, and the list went on. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Okay, well, you're sure you got a long list. Greg, is this true? He said, I don't say it that much. <laughs> and she piped in and said, but you show it. Here's that body language I was talking about. It shows up in your expression and your actions and your eyes and your gesture, your attitude. You're walking out in the room. You know, you don't have to speak it to, to get it. And so Greg started to do some work and, and he came to realize that he was looking to Mary to be his happiness. She was the source of his joy. She was the one that would fill his emptiness, if you would. Kind of a typical needy guy thing, but I, I won't stereotype here. <clears throat> And so as he began to recognize that he had the ability for happiness inside of himself, that he was not needing her to fill the bucket, and that he began to see her in a sense of light and love, and that's what got poured into the relationship, and you know, what got poured back was, that, was her beginning to shift inside and noticing. And one day when Mary showed up an hour late at night from wor working late, uh, unannounced and just threw a bag of Chinese food on the table. They would exchange, you know, taking turns who was responsible for feeding the family that night. Well, it was her turn and she was late and she threw Chinese food and they all devoured it. And after they sat down, Greg didn't say anything. And Mary just kind of touched his arm and said, Hey, honey, I want you to know I've noticed you haven't complained about me coming home late for a while. And I know you don't like Chinese food, but it was the best I could do. And he just said, you know, I'm just so sorry that I was looking to you to fill me up. You know, that it's not you, your responsibility to fill me. And so with that, they cried and made amends and, and lived happily ever after. So I would guess. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> But as you begin to step back and have a higher perspective, and sometimes uh, the wise ones or spiritual practitioners can assist you to see how it is you're creating the dynamic that is there. But I want us to understand that the world we see is the world we live in. So if I'm looking at a world where I need to get to fill me up, then I'm always going to be empty where I need to get and fill up. But if I'm looking at a world where, you know what, I am a conduit, an avenue through which spirit flows, then it will pour forth. And even when I am in pain and I feel like I should be sitting on the sideline, that 
I remember Isaiah, the 25th chapter, verse 8, it said, and God will wipe away the tears from your face. He will wipe them away, and you will find something that will put you back out there to share a little bit of the good fortune that you might have, and just a little bit begins to get things moving, begins to get things moving, and then you're in the flow. The pump has been primed, the spirit is moving, and you continually fill and pour, fill and pour, but what happens is the fortune begins to expand because it is never depleted by your giving and your sharing love. It is continually expanding, expanding in your life, where all of a sudden people will see you walking by, and they go, whoa! There goes a love expression, by all means. God bless us as we express that love for the world. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring Mr. Jamie Lula back to the stage. Thank you. Absolutely. I love your fire. The good doctor, Christian Sorens. So Fran sparked something in me. And then your talk sparked something in me. And I decided to change the second song that I'm doing today. And the root word of perfect doesn't mean um, unflawed. It means whole. So um, perfection is not about finding that perfect person. It's just it's finding the wholeness in one another.
When I'm trying my best to put one foot in front of the other. Oh, oh, you're perfect. You're golden. You're the light of my life. You're my love from forever. In your reflection, I'm perfect. So I'll keep looking at you to keep witnessing my perfection. In you, is me. Oh. Every angel sang, I died, 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 I You're always there, you never leave You're holding me, you set me free. Your empathy, your confidence to express in and as me. Oh, you're perfect. You're golden. You're the light of my life. You're my love from forever. In your reflection. I'm perfect, so I'll keep looking at you to keep witnessing that I'm perfect, and I'm golden. So I'll keep looking at you to keep witnessing my perfection in you, Chloe, is me. Oh, light, I die, 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 die. Charlie, you're perfect. And every angel sang, Check it out. Your perfect golden light, my love. Your perfect golden light, my love. Would you sing that with me? Your perfect. Golden light, my love, Claire, your perfect, Callie, your golden Christian light, my love. Turn and sing that to your neighbor, your perfect, golden light. My love, find another neighbor to sing it to. Your perfect golden light. My love, now sing it to yourself. Your perfect golden light. My love.
Nice job, Jamie. That is Mr. Jamie Lola. Changing it up for us. It's not what the first service got, I assure you. But it's the truth. It is the truth. It is the truth. Hey, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in our love and the sharing and the givingness and knowing that as we put forth that which is, that has blessed our world, what we will find is those blessings increase in our life. As we continue to remember, it is spirit that gives us the source to experience the wealth, to experience the healing, to be able to be that presence made manifest in the world in which we walk. We will find it continually showing up in the world that we're walking in. So as you give, it comes back. You are that activity of spirit. I invite you to listen to your heart and say yes, 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 to the manner in which it wants to express. I want to call our uh, ushers forward at this time and say thank you to this this, um, this wonderful crew, I appreciate you and your support of Sunday mornings, and, and thank you to those that mail in your contributions when you cannot be here on a Sunday, or those that remem remember us with their regular auto tie, that regular systematic support from your world into seasides. Um, it is greatly appreciated because we have those regular weekly responsibilities, and, and thank you to all those that are watching us in the live streaming or, or the archives, the podcast. Um, we just stand here in the sense of appreciation with the most uh, generous of spiritual communities, feeling that wonderful flow of life, the blessing of the divine that shows up within our world. For truly that wealth of spirit moves from the very heart and soul and the center of, of each and every one of us. Each of us becomes that vortex of that God expression of that light. For truly each of us is that tap that becomes that expression or that avenue through which that infinite reservoir pours forth its blessings and love and caring and in abundance and ease and health and grace. For truly as each of us chooses to relax and, and feel a sense of peace and security, knowing the source is inexhaustible and particularizes in a relevant way within our individual lives, we're able to move forth with a greater sense of ease of sharing the generosity that stirs within the heart and the soul. Grateful to pour forth this this expression of life from the fullness of being. I say thank you, Father, Mother, God, for this opportunity to recognize the truth and the manner in which life flows. Not thank you to anyone or anything outside, just a sense of grace, gratitude, appreciation, and thanksgiving for the abundant universe in which I walk. And so it is. Amen. Together, let us say this uh, affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now.
And so as I stand before this abundant expression, feel the love for the band, the joy of uh, what is happening within this community, I truly know that this wellspring that sources from within each and every one of us pours forth into life, continuing to bring the blessings to those that comes in contact. It is received in joy. It is handled in good stewardship. It is sent forth back into service, into action. For truly, it is in that wonderful sea and that circulation that it continues to reciprocate and grow and to expand. For truly, this blessing that has been given enriches the giver in untold, relevant, and real kinds of ways. I say thank you, Father, Mother, God, for standing witness to the loving expression of the abundance of the universe here and now, and it graces this community continuously and so it is. Amen. All right. Thank you. This is Ray Holder. He is the head of our men's group. Been around Seaside forever. Um, I was at his breakfast a couple weeks ago. You guys meet at the end of every month. There are 18 guys there for breakfast. So the end of every month on Saturdays, hang out with Ray. And it wasn't because you guys are doing that great article from the Science of Mind magazine on love that I read, wrote, but uh, because you have that many every month. So Good job. Way to hold the space. They're a bunch of great, loving guys. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I felt that. I felt that. So, Ray Holder. Speaking of loving guys, the band from Seaside. Fabulous, as always. Jamie Lula. Oh, my. Way to be present for us in the moment. Thank you for sharing your heart and soul. Reverend Fran, what a blessing you are to share and guide us with the wonderful musical expression. Love the call to worship today. That was great. Dr. Christina, thank you for sharing your Sunday with us. Giving us sound today is Ed. Giving us this visuals is Marv. Great job, guys. Know that there's CDs available after the service. They bought a bunch at the first, so buy some at the second if you'd like. And Tim, thank you for sharing this with the world. Our live streaming is appreciated by more people than you would ever begin to know. So, hey, I'll tell you what's happening right after the service is we're having lunch together, so stick around, have some lunch from uh, the cafe on Lake, but then you get to decide whether you're going to Dr. Christina's uh, uh, wellness thing up on the hill. If you're a facilitator for real love, we're getting together in the Emerson room. If, uh, if you're coming to the workshop, that is a red hot happening that's going on right here. And uh, was there one other thing? There was three. Oh, the choir's practicing. Lori Gertz is doing a Facebook for those who want to learn. There is so, I just love, we are a spiritual campus offering so many things that you've got to just be able to find one. It's like having a TV set with a thousand channels and saying there's nothing to watch. <laughs> you know, we're a spiritual nexus that offers a vast array of opportunities to play with people of uh, like minds. Hey guys, anybody want to share anything? I am grateful for my grandma. Oh, she's a good one. She's a happy I'm for my family. Nice. Yeah. Anybody else? Bye. Yes. I'm grateful for um, my mommy. Oh, that's a good one. I'm grateful my, for my mommy and my brother. Ooh, those are good ones. Hey, guys. You want to share anything? Yeah, come on up. I am thankful for everything in this whole world and even the God who created it. Oh, very nice. Future preacher in store. Okay. Here we go. For all the time or for mom. All right. I thank you for my mom and my dad. Wow. Oh, we had Abby. You know what? Okay, you tell me. Okay, come on up and. I'm grateful for my foster mom. Oh, nice. I'm grateful for my mom. Wow. Abigail, last time. I'm thankful for my family. Nice. A lot of gratitude. What are you grateful for, Lori? <laughs> Looking perfect for Mardi Gras. Fran wants us to sing that happy song next week, right? Okay, get ready. We'll have the words up there on the board. But I want to pray because we have so much going on as soon as I get done. So I've got to get going so we can keep it going. So I invite you to go with me into this divine space where there is spirit just alive seeking to express itself 
and each and every one of us becomes that wonderful vortex of the God expression. I feel it. I sense it. I just stand in that wonderful space of light and life. I stand upon holy ground, knowing truly that the blessings of God moves in this moment. I become that transparency of that God expression, standing in the revelation of the greater good, knowing the truth for each and every one of us is that we move to a greater conscious connection with that life force and life source that brings all that is necessary in our individual lives for truly the blessings of God is upon this moment. And I stand with a sense of jubilation, the sense of joy of this wellspring of this life that is moving here and now for Seaside is growing, it is expanding. For today every seat was filled with people being blessed by the presence of God, the family room, the coffee house was filled, the tables, people enjoying the wonderful expression of God that is alive in this community as we come together and create what it is. I know the blessings of God is touching in a personal and very real kind of way. For I need not direct the intelligence of the universe. I stand receptive, being a witness to the wonderful emanation that heals and transforms, finding the courage to step forth and be that which I need to be in this world, trusting the expression of God is my very life. For this is what I have to offer into relationship. This relationship with people, situations, business, body. We're in a relational kind of expression with all things healing that sense of separation. For the only challenge there is, you can label it what you want. The only cause to all the various effects is a sense of separation in that life form. And mystically return to that union of that Christ consciousness. That who sees me sees the one that sent me. Sent that divine presence. I return to the spiritual roots of being, knowing that this vibrancy and this frequency is a transformative power and brings a healing and wholeness to my life. Brings a sense of well-being. And it's in this sense of well-being we surround our sister. I just got the note, Elaine, that Elaine's brother died this morning. Fred Allen made his transition in his sleep. I know you're going tomorrow, but we surround you with this love, with this caring, with this compassion, and rest in the knowledge of the continuity of life. That Fred moves on with those wonderful currents of eternality, able to express his life freer than ever. Grateful to be part of a spiritual community that cares and loves, where kindness is practiced, non-judgmental expression is expressing disappointment. is not what it is about. It is expressing love expressing joy, being available for what is after this. Every prayer in our prayer request chest is so the practitioners who have spoken, they speak the words of truth, they continue to speak those words all week long as they take these prayer requests and pray on them. There's such a love that is permeating the very foundation of this community. Feel it because as you say yes, there is an opening to that flow. You become that vortex of this wellspring of the divine presence that transforms all things. It will lead, it will guide, it will direct, it will enrich, it will bless. And this I am grateful for the healing, for the opening, for the transformation, this being. I let go and I trust. And it's not my way. It's not what I say. It's not what I tell people. It is opening up to that place of silence that Father Thomas Keaton was talking about. God's first language, everything else. <laughs> it's a poor interpretation. I listen. I hear. There's a resonance inside the very essence of my being. The cellular memory of wholeness lines up. And I am grateful. Living in the state of grace and appreciation, not for anything I'm getting, just in a state of thanksgiving. There's a richness to life. That I am, that you are, that Seaside is. It continues to thrive and grow and be here for those seekers. The spiritual nexus that is alive and vibrant with wonderful offerings. I just let go knowing that God's in charge. I let go. Let spirit have its way. I surrender my fight. I surrender my battle. I surrender my aggravation. I just surrender to that something I have come to know that is so beautiful that is within the Spirit itself seeking to shine as you. So it is.
there was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient and I didn't know the love Together. I really give my love. <laughs> really give my love. I'm living in love. I'm living in peace. I'm living my life. What I believe to joys and through fears in this world I walk. God's face shines on me. Well, it shines on us all. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. Well. We're living in peace, united we stand as one family. We honor all truth as together we walk. God's grace moves through me and moves through us all. We are living in grace.
Amen, amen. Hallelujah.